Hey gang, what's good? Welcome to another Morrowind Mechanics video guide. In this one, we'll be continuing the Spell Effects subseries by taking a look at alteration effects and their functionality. We'll cover each effect in roughly alphabetical order, but also we'll be grouping similar effects. So as always, feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip around if you'd like. Now compared to other spell schools, alteration is relatively straightforward in almost all cases. That said, it's kind of a mixed bag. Some effects are fantastic and others are easily outclassed by similar ones in other schools of magic. Throughout this video, we'll be touching on character movement speed. Here, we'll be taking a simpler look, only looking at the portions of formulae that are especially relevant. In the future, I'll have a separate video dedicated to the specifics of character movement if you're interested in a bit of a deeper dive. First up in our alteration school is the Burden spell effect. Burden increases the target's current encumbrance by the listed magnitude at a 1 to 1 ratio. With a high enough Burden magnitude, you can root enemies in place by raising their current encumbrance beyond their maximum. This can be handy in the hands of a ranged character when facing an enemy who either has no ranged attacks or a significantly worse ranged attack compared to melee. Now, all that said, if you're skilled in destruction magic, drain strength and damage strength are actually far better alternatives. The biggest problem with Burden is that many characters have excessive amounts of maximum encumbrance relative to their current encumbrance. Because Burden doesn't stack with reapplications, you would need multiple Burden spells or absurdly high magnitudes. Drain Strength is better because it has the same base magicka cost as Burden, that being 1, but of course the magnitude on Drain Strength represents 1 Strength, and 1 Strength is equivalent to 5 points of encumbrance. Basically this means that Drain Strength is 5 times more effective. Damage Strength is a better alternative simply because it's permanent until cured, albeit that comes with an 8 times higher magicka cost. Now, similar to Burden, we have Feather effects. Feather does the opposite in that it reduces your current encumbrance by the listed magnitude at a 1 to 1 ratio. Also similar to Burden is the fact that Fortify Strength is a superior option to Feather in almost all cases. Just like before, they have the same base magicka cost, but each point in Strength is of course equivalent to 5 points of encumbrance. There are a handful of cases in which Feather effects may be more valuable. This is because in addition to several other stats and exterior factors, our character's movement speed accounts for our current encumbrance relative to our maximum. So in some cases, you may be able to increase move speed more efficiently through Feather. However, this is usually only relevant to characters with strength levels far beyond 100. If any of that is confusing, just remember that it's almost always fine to favor Fortify Strength effects over Feather. Moving on, we have Jump effects, one of my personal favorites. As you'd expect, this effect amplifies your ability to jump great distances. It makes for a really fun way to navigate Morrowind's open world. Now, I'm sure most folks will be interested to hear how Jump compares to Fortify Acrobatics from the Restoration School. Well, first and foremost, it's important to know that Jump effects do not protect you from fall damage the same way that Acrobatics does. So, when using high magnitude Jump effects, be sure that as you're landing you have a slow fall effect or a similar solution to safely break your fall. However, this isn't the only way in which Jump differs from Fortify Acrobatics. On screen now are the relevant parts of some of the movement formulae related to jumping and some results I got after running numbers through it. What we can derive from all this information is that starting from the lowest possible initial acrobatics of 15, a 1 point increase to acrobatics results in a 0.294 unit of distance increase in our jump height. This distance quickly ramps up and caps out at exactly 50 acrobatics, which is equivalent to 251 units of distance when you jump. From 50 acrobatics onward, each skill point increases our jump by about 12 distance units. On the flip side, we've got jump effects. Just one magnitude of jump is always equal 
to 64 units of distance. There's no ramping up. However, since jump has tripled the base cost of Fortify Acrobatics, we'll need to divide by 3 to compare them better, which gets us 21.33. <laughs> Repeating, of course. This means that jump effects are almost twice as good as Fortify Acrobatics. So, if any of that was confusing, just remember to always use jump effects over Fortify Acrobatics whenever possible. By the way, before we move on, keep in mind that this is just a segment of the movement formula tied to jumping. For those interested, as I said, we'll go further in depth on movement in a later video. Also, if you have no idea what a unit of distance is in Morrowind, and I don't blame you, try messing around with the get distance console command to help you get a better idea, or at least a rough idea. Next up are levitate effects. Levitation allows you to reach higher areas with more precision than jump or fortify acrobatics effects. The same warning applies in that if your levitate effect fades away while you're high up in the air, make sure that you're prepared to safely break your fall in some way. Now to help us understand our levitate speed, let's look at the movement speed formula covering flight speed. As before with jump, we'll go more into depth on this in a later video covering movement specifically. For now though, let's just take note that while flight speed does account for our encumbrance and speed attribute as you'd expect, it does not account for our athletic skill. Instead, it factors in the magnitude of our levitate effect. Levitate's magnitude and our speed attribute are actually weighted equally in this formula. What this means for us when playing the game is that fortifying our speed is actually a better way to gain higher levitation speeds than increasing Levitate's magnitude. This is because Levitate has triple the base magicka cost as fortifying our speed attribute. In an ideal situation, you'd have a one magnitude Levitate with a long duration and an accompanying fortify speed effect of high magnitude that lasts for the same duration. The next two alteration effects we'll be covering are Lock and Open, which go hand in hand with one another. Lock is a pretty niche effect in its usefulness. It does what you'd expect, placing a locked effect on a door or container that's equal to the magnitude of the spell. You can use this to contain NPCs behind doors that don't send you through a loading screen. Since NPCs in Morrowind cannot follow you through doors that load other cells, you're really only needed for these interior doors. You can also use lock effects to help manually level up your security skill if you're so inclined. Just be careful where you practice this as this can sometimes be considered a crime even if it's your own lock. It's worth pointing out that because you always gain the same XP from picking a lock regardless of lock level and because NPCs are incapable of picking any locks, you don't need to make any custom lock spells or enchantments. The regular vendor bought spell Fenric's Door Jam will suffice and it only has a cost of just one magicka. Opposite of lock effects, Open is an extremely useful spell. It does what you'd expect and is a handy alternative to using lockpicks and security. Similar to lockpicking, this is still considered a crime if witnessed. If you're trying to avoid detection, you could try an on-target Open spell and use it from far away but really I'd recommend trying Chameleon Effects and an on-touch spell instead. You see, Chameleon Effects only have a one Magicka base cost, however Open has a base cost of six. It's worth pointing out that on-target Open Effects can also sometimes be finicky to land on smaller objects, all the more reason to favor on-touch versions instead. Just keep in mind that this only works on locks, You'll need other solutions like telekinesis or probes to safely disarm traps. Now, we come to standard shield effects and elemental shield effects. Regular shield increases your armor rating by the effect's listed magnitude at a 1 to 1 ratio, unlike actual armor which has weighted benefits for each different armor slot. This may sound good, but it rapidly becomes a poor effect as you upgrade your equipment. Instead, if you're using a full set of the same armor weight class, you should opt for effects that fortify your skill in that same armor class. It costs less magicka and scales well with your equipment as you upgrade it. If you want more on how armor rating works and is used to calculate physical damage mitigation, 
check out my shields and armor guide that covers exactly that. Now, along the same lines, elemental shield effects are also rarely worth using. Elemental shields grant you their listed magnitude as resistance to their corresponding element, and 10% of their magnitude is dealt to melee range attackers as elemental damage that corresponds to the effect. The damage component of this effect works more like a traditional Thorns effect than a point-blank AoE, so it's safe to use around friendly NPCs. The problem with elemental shield effects is many enemies who use elemental damage are already resistant or immune to that same damage type. For example, Flame Atronex deal fire damage, but are also completely immune to it. It's frequently better to just invest fully in elemental resistance or layering damage in other ways like fortifying your strength, both of which have lower base magicka costs. Oh, and I should point out that without a mod to correct it, Fire Shield has a red icon as if it were a destruction effect. However, it's still very much classified as an alteration effect. At last, we come to the previously mentioned slow fall effect. Like many others, it does exactly what you'd expect. While you can use it to gain more precise movement while jumping, Levitate is frequently a better option as it has the exact same base cost. More importantly is that it completely negates fall damage, even at just one magnitude, which has also a nearly imperceptible impact on your traveling velocity. If you're keen on jumping to navigate through Morrowind, it's recommended to get a constant effect enchantment of Slowfall for just one magnitude. You can get the same effect by fortifying your acrobatics to 125, but this is a far more cost-effective alternative. Before we move on, I should point out that there is a bug when using this effect on characters besides yourself that can cause them to actually take increased fall damage. Finally, bringing up the rear, we have the three water-centric alteration effects. First, let's look at the Swift Swim effect. This one is also straightforward in that it makes your character swim faster. However, similar to other alteration effects, it's just better to fortify your speed attribute instead. Fortify speed does the same thing, has a lower base cost, and of course, works outside of water. Next, we've got Water Breathing. It too is straightforward, but has a little hidden functionality. Water Breathing actually resets your character's air gauge, so even a one second duration effect is still sufficient to keep your character from drowning. It's worth pointing out that the Luminous Rasula Mushroom has Water Breathing as its first listed effect, so you can eat it raw for a chance of refreshing your air gauge if you're very desperate. Also, it may be worth making an on-touch version of this effect to use on NPC followers if, for whatever reason, you need to bring them underwater for extended periods of time. They can, in fact, drown. Now, we come to the very last alteration effect, Water Walking. Once again, this one works exactly how you'd expect. It is worth pointing out, though, that aquatic enemies won't be able to attack you while you're water walking, even if they're directly below you. Alright, that should wrap up the entirety of Alteration Magic. Hopefully, this has helped shed some light on which effects are worth your time and which really aren't. If you like this, I've got other guides covering other spell schools, as well as many other facets of the game with more guides on the way. I've also got a weekly playthrough of Morrowind going, with a new one popping out every Monday. Have a look at that too if you're into that sort of thing. Anyway, thank you for tuning into this one. Peace.